Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, we're going to derive the quadratic formula and learn and discover where it came to be. The quadratic formula is used to find the real solutions of a quadratic equation when it is written in standard form, noting that the value of a when written in standard form cannot be equal to zero. If a were zero, then we'd have zero x squared, which means no x squared term, making it a linear function. So here is the quadratic formula. It states that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Again, x, when we're solving, we have plus or minus here, so we could have two roots, one root, or no real solutions. So we're looking for our x-intercepts or our roots or solutions. Those are three different ways that you can be asked to solve a quadratic function. So here we go. We're going to discover now that the quadratic equation must be written in standard form first. So here we have it. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So reminding you a cannot be 0 because this term would be 0, giving us bx plus c, which is a linear function. So the quadratic formula has come to be from completing the square to a quadratic function in standard form, just with no values for a, b, or c. So the Babylonians are credited with this method of completing the square. Pythagoras was one of the first to attempt a formula for finding the solutions to a quadratic equation, but he didn't discover it. It was the Babylonians. So here we go. I'm going to complete the square. Hopefully your teacher never expects you to do this on your own. They just expect you to understand that it happened and that that's where the quadratic formula came from. So first, to solve a quadratic equation, we're going to evaluate y equals 0 to find the solutions. So we know that if we replace y with 0, that's going to give us our solutions or our x-intercepts, sometimes referred to as our roots. So that's step one when you complete the square. Now, step two is we're going to divide each term by a to be sure that the leading coefficient is 1. So here, because this is a generic one, right, and we don't know if a is 1 or another value, I'm going to divide everything by a just to make sure. So we divide ax squared by a, bx by a, c by a, and 0 by a. We have to do the same thing to all terms to be fair when of doing anything to an algebraic equation. So now to simplify, a divided by a is 1 giving me just x squared, and 0 divided by a is 0. Any 0 divided by any value is 0. So here we have our simplified version. And now the next thing I'm going to do when I go to complete the square is I want to subtract this constant or do the inverse to both sides. So I'm going to subtract ca from both sides of my equation. That gives me x squared plus bx divided by a equals negative c over a. So you can see that I'm just completing the square to the standard form of a quadratic function. So let me start fresh on a new slide, and here is where we have gone and set this up to complete the square. Now the next step is we want to create a perfect square trinomial on the left side by finding half of the coefficient of x and then squaring it. So half of b over a would be b over 2a. So then we're going to make sure that we add that to both sides. So to create that perfect square, I find half of b over a, which is b over 2a, 1 half times b a, b divided by a. I square it and I add it to both sides. So now the next step is we're going to write this left side as a perfect square trinomial, and I want to simplify this right side. I'm going to square that algebraic expression. So hopefully you've learned this trick to write this as a perfect square trinomial. This value that we squared becomes our constant. So x plus b over 2a all squared is equivalent. Now we're going to simplify b over 2a. So b squared and then 2a squared is 2a times 2a or 4a squared. Now the next step is to write this right side with a common denominator. So in order to do that, I need to multiply both the numerator and denominator here by 4a to get 4a squared as a common denominator. So over here, 4a times c and 4a times a is 4a squared. And we have a common denominator. 
Now we're going to combine our numerators. So we can write this as b squared minus 4ac all over the common denominator of 4a squared. So this negative sign gets attached to the numerator so that we have a common denominator of positive 4a squared. All right, let me bring this over to the next slide. And now we're going to find the square root of each side. So when you complete the square, after you've created your perfect square trinomial, you're going to find the square root because it's a perfect square now. And then we want the two possible two roots on the right side. So plus or minus the square root of this value. Now the square root of this is going to be just this binomial x plus b over 2a. And then we cannot find the square root of b squared minus 4ac, but we're going to find the square root of our denominator. And 4a squared is a perfect square. So the square root of 4a squared is 2a, since 2a times 2a is 4a squared. Now to solve for x, we're going to subtract b over 2a from each side. And when we rewrite that, that's our zero pair, so it gives us x is equal to negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So you notice I've put the negative sign in the numerator so that our denominators are the same. So now I'm going to write this all over one common denominator. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And there you have it. That is the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is a shortcut used to find the real solutions of a quadratic equation when it is written in standard form instead of going through the steps of completing the square. So now the task is to memorize the quadratic formula. Hope you'll come back soon to learn more about the quadratic formula and things about the discriminant. And I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you come back soon and have a great day.